This is for all you lovebirds out there. Another request for you. Profit equals cost minus revenue. And we're talking about this in terms of function notation. You may see this. P of x is equal to your cost function minus your revenue function. Of course, x is representing the number of items that you make and sell. And a lot of the problems that you will come across will have the assumption, yes, I know, we should not assume, but it's the assumption that you sell everything you make. We're not worried about supply and demand. Whatever you supply is the demand. Okay. Now, what does it mean to break even? To break even means that your profit is zero. What you spend is what you're taking in. That is breaking even. In other words, that means that your cost function is equal to your revenue at some at some point. Okay? So suppose I say this. Suppose I say that a cost function is given by 15x plus 200. And when you see these equations, these functions, this typically right here is going to be some, some startup or it's a fixed cost. Usually for the cost of a, of a large piece of equipment, machine, a building. The 15 right here is going to be your cost per unit. The cost per unit. And the things that go into the cost per unit will be utilities, salaries, actual uh, materials. Or it could be even be you know, maintenance cost for your building or for your equipment. Sometimes that's kind of factored in if you're going to budget things correctly. Now suppose that I say that your revenue function is, is equal to 23x. So this 23 right here is what you're saying is the price per unit. The cost, how much are you charging the consumer for each unit that you sell? Now, just from what makes sense here, you notice that the company is selling things for more than it costs them to make per unit, right? So this may not be the, the best thing for the company to do, but it's, it should eventually work, right? That means if I look at my profit function, we said that my profit is, I wrote that back, why did I write cost minus revenue? You know what, I made a mistake. It's revenue minus cost, I apologize for that. Anyway, everybody makes mistakes. Don't we know it? So your profit is your revenue minus your cost. So if I were to set this up, that's 23x minus the quantity 15x plus 200. So when you work this out, 23x minus 15x minus 200 which gives you 8x minus 200. So this is a function that represents the profit for what it is that I'm working on. So if I ask you to do this, if I say, all right, evaluate P of 2. If I only make two units and sell two units, what's my profit? That's 16 minus 200, so I've I've actually lost $184, right? Now, of course, if you read the problem, sometimes they're talking about profit, cost, and revenue may be in thousands of dollars, or X may be in hundreds of units sold, so make sure you do read that correctly. So what about breaking even? What was that? 25 is your break even. 25 is break even? Because if I set these guys equal to each other, or actually if I find out when does my profit equal zero, I should get 25. 
So break even is when your profit is equal to your cost. So when 23x equals 15x plus 200. If I move the 15x over, I get 8x is equal to 200, which means that x equals 25. That break-even point tells you that if you can make and sell 25 units, what will your profit be? The question was asking you to plug in the the uh, the cost and the revenue, and then it would you know you get a break-even of say 25, mm -hmm. and then they were saying they had planned to make 37 units. Is it worth yeah. them continuing, right. or they were they could only make 20 units? Was it worth it? So you kind of had to understand the problem, all right. the fundamentals of it, in order to answer it. Right, so what you're saying is that the problem was, at, was saying that there were already some limitations and some restrictions, either in terms of they only have so much material to make so many units, exactly. or this is all they plan on making. Yeah. Just like you're talking about the, um, the Ferrari, La Ferrari. I think that they were, I think that's the one they were making 499 of. So <clears throat> if you sell each of them for 1 million euro, you have to figure out how much money are you going to take in based on how much did it cost to make that. Is it worth it? So this one, we know that the break-even is 25. If you make and sell less than 25, you'll be operating at a what? Loss. Loss. If you sell more than this, you'll be operating at profit. profit. You'll you actually have some, some money coming in, right, that you can then reinvest and do other things with. That's how business works, right? Now. Going back to that Ferrari example, would it be worth it to them, or is it ever worth it to sell things at a loss? Yes. Why? Because sometimes you make more money on the repair. Sometimes it is a, um, or you get taxed. It's a, it's a support. Um, it supports another product that you sell. Right. So if your margin is such that you can be very profitable on that, but you can't really sell that unless you sell this one, then your loss is included in the revenue and the profit in the other product. So, yeah. Right, and, and and sometimes, you know, with Ferrari, they're, you know, their hands are in other things as well, and a lot of it is just maintaining brand recognition. You may have a little bit of a loss, but if you can maintain that, hey, this car is awesome, and people want this and people desire it, you can still sell other things. You can sell the Ferrari brand, not necessarily the car to everybody, but you can sell the brand to everyone. And sometimes, um, it kind of goes back to the whole disposable razor thing. You make something that everybody needs, everybody uses, well, a lot of people use. You may, <laughs> you, you may sell these, the, the main holders at a loss, but if people keep buying the cartridge refills, that's where your money is. Like video game systems well, no, is or another. Or the printers. I mean, printers are a perfect example for that. Yeah. The printers are cheap. You know, I mean, go out and buy a brand new color laser printer for two hundred bucks, but it costs you eighty bucks each for the four freaking toner. And I think I think I think everybody has had the experience. You bought a printer and you've spent several more times that just on the on the ink absolutely. as as well. Just buy a printer and yeah. throw it away. I but in my previous life, I did a lot of business consulting mm. for uh, uh, American Management Services, and we did a uh, sterilization company in Maryland, and I, I had a uh, dairy in Maryland. We did a recalibration on the dairy, and they saved over a million dollars a year because they were giving out too much product in their gallon and half gallon uh, milk jugs. But this other one was the exact same thing you were yeah. talking about. You, they sell products that they either broke even or had a minor loss mm -hmm. on, but the only reason they would sell those is because they were part of packages and other products right. that supported the other products that they did make money on. So in the real world, you look at more than just the particular item that you're working on. And there's a lot more, there's a lot more out there. It can be a lot more complicated, but okay. this is just the, the basics of what it means to, to break even.